Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where finally, finally, we can start thinking about casting our net further afield, as we have a half million in credits up there. I am definitely going to be buying myself some patched conics, and you know what that means. That means we are heading further afield than just the equatorial moon orbit. Uh, another thing that I really, really want to do with this 400,000 we have left is spend at least half of it on getting us off of the 30-part ship limit. I, I, yeah, I'm just, oh, it's horrible, it's horrible. Now, why are we doing all this? Well, because if we go and have a look, hey, Gene, in the uh, contract section, Minmus Exploration, this is what it is all about. This is why I'm so excited. I was going to be sending people to the moon, but then I was like, no, 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 no. You know what? We've got this much science here, and I don't know about you guys, but I like robots. Uh, I like robots a lot. I, I, I don't, I don't think the game puts enough emphasis on probes, rovers and robots. I, I really think that should happen more often. So to that end, I'm going to be spending my like, well, 160 of my 200 science here on the tiny bits all around because I, I like satellites and we're just going to use satellites to explore Minmus. Plus it opens up all this sort of like really cool stuff over here. Right, <laughs> after that little bit of a, an excited intro, should we go and go and plan out a mission in the VAB? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's what we're going to do. So as is normally the case when I'm coming on to make an explore mission, I'm going to start with this Munular Eye um, and just rip it apart because basically it's not got all the stuff. Well, it again is old technology and I don't want old technology on my nice spangly new spaceships. We want the nice cutting edge stuff out there. So I stick these tiny, tiny uh, fuel cells on there because we're not going far. We're just going to Minmus and at this sort of weight, this vessel is like hugely efficient on the Delta V, like ridiculously efficient. Uh, now I'm putting this one together for the first half of what you guys know to be a two half contract. The explore missions are very much go there and do stuff in orbit and then go and land and do stuff on the land. So this is the go there and do stuff in orbit. You'll notice I'm putting communicatrons on the top. We're going to have a chat about them later, but communicatrons on the top and a uh, temperature probe as well, or thermometer as we like to call them in the real world. Then I throw the stack separator on because it's time to build the second part of this mission. Once again, we're going for a tiny probe-like robot thing um, because, hey, they're better than Kerbals, or at least they're lighter than Kerbals, and that, that's kind of what I'm going for here i mean you can see on thy kerbal engineer output panel there that my delta v values are just like insane for the amount of fuel that i'm putting on here but enough of that what do we need on this lander well we need some power to make sure that it is uh, uh, having a controlled flight uh, we also need some engines of course because we need to put this thing down gently if we didn't put it down gently there would be a horrible fireball explosion and as we don't have the gravioli detector on minmus there's no point in that and then i do the one thing that i want you guys to remember about from this building process i move the science from the satellite to the landing probe. If you remember that fact, you will laugh harder later. And then we have to get some sort of lifting device on the bottom of this. Now this is easy as hell because all we're doing is going to Minmus and this thing weighs like two tons or something silly like that. So I just put a single stack engine underneath, um, spend a little bit of time trying to decide whether I want gimballing or the extra bit of thrust. As it turned out, I wanted gimballing. Uh, and then just some um, solid boosters on the side of it. Uh, and again, because the payload is so light, we literally only have to put down these, these tiny numbers here and according to the Kerbal Engineer we've got enough to go so um, let's go. With a vessel as simple as your little brother this vehicle gets up to low Kerbin orbit like you would not believe. I mean literally we've got like two moving parts here and three rockets nothing can go wrong here I mean, other than my shoddy flying and I've got so much pr practice with that recently that that's not going to happen so if it's all right with you I would like to jump straight up to orbit of course if you're not all right with that jump to orbit please do let me know in the comments so we're up in orbit I have deployed my solar panels job number one on the checklist was done and now what we're trying to do is line up the orbit with Minmus now what I did was I looked along the horizon of Kerbin uh, and drew a line from Minmus to Kerbin to the ship and when all those um, all those points matched up on the same line like this I then looked at the horizon of Kerbin for 
this little weedy dot over here and decide, well, I didn't decide, this was the best place to start boosting our way up. Uh, there was a little bit of a staging to do somewhere around here um, because we ran out of fuel on our lifting stage. That is fine. That is totally within the bounds of what I'd expected because, once again, the Kerbal Engineer told me that I had ridiculous values of Delta V to play with here. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to push my Apple apps up to the same height as uh, Minmus. That's 46... 46 million kilom uh, kilometers or meters i don't know it's 46 million it's one of those uh and and we end up with this beautiful orbit here which to me as i'm going for a polar orbit is absolutely brilliant now all that we have to do is sit back and relax and watch these beautiful shots of the the, the probe here passing out of the Kerbin system but of course, those of you that know me will know that like sitting around and just watching things go from one planet to another, that's not my bag. That just takes so long. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the contract center, say hello, Gene, and we're going to try and pick up this little this little um, contract here to go around and do some temperature scans on the Mun. So we go over and have a look at Min... Uh, at Rich Mal, as he is our Munular expert right now, and we notice that he's running out of fuel a little bit. So we need to do another refueling mission. This time I decide not to start with the bang zoom concept, but in fact we're going to build a new one from scratch. Uh, so I start off with this uh, probodyne core up on top, mainly for reasons of cost, which is a little bit silly because the cost values between one probodyne core and the other is like hundreds of credits, and it costs thousands to throw an engine on. So the saving is a little bit dubious. But anyway, that's what I did, and we're going to deal with it here. And I decided to go with three times symmetry for all the stuff on the bottom. Uh, I'm only putting little fuel set, uh, little engines on the bottom because, well, that's all we need. It, it really is all we need. And three landing legs should really make a nice stable landing platform for us as is the way. Uh, so we need to put some solar panels on here to make sure that the, uh, the probe core doesn't die and some batteries and others, as always, I'm thinking about what I can salvage off of this to put onto the, lo the Alone Ranger because obviously with the Kerbal Attachment System that is just a much more viable option to do stuff with and other very wordy ways of explaining stuff. Right, so we've stuck a fuel line on top because, hey, this is a refuel mission. And now we're going to throw some uh, tanks on the side because, hey, this is a refuel mission. We want to try and get as much fuel out there as possible. Uh, with the, la the bang zoom, we found out that just getting a, a single one of those I'm going to say large fuel tanks, but I know they're not large, but the larger small fuel tanks um, getting up there is not enough to refill the bang zoom. So having a little bit of extra weight on the side is absolutely ideal. And now I'm thinking about what sort of lander to put underneath. I started with kind of a, a small lander concept, not lander, lifter concept, sorry, uh, and very quickly realized that it just didn't have the oomph. We are not sending a probe up now. We are sending fuel tanks full of fuel up. So we need to build a bigger, beefier lifting stage. And I think I'm doing quite well on the beefy lifting stage with this particular design here um, so we've got the solid core down the middle I mean that on its own should provide enough lift to get us out but there wasn't quite enough fuel uh, so I had to throw these other ones on the side here um, and the one thing that I have noticed is those double fuel tanks in the middle is, is really just heavy enough to be lifted by the middle engine the, the skipper down there so if I wanted to add more fuel tanks I needed to add more engines and that's why the engines are on the bottom there now I did try and add some pretty badass big beefy um, solid boosters here but you will notice that my weight has gone well over the top so we had to uh, bring this down to two of them rather than four little bit annoying and you will notice struts struts going on everywhere because when the when designs get this big and this powerful they do have a tendency to pull themselves apart so yeah a uh, little bit of staging and let's get to the launch pad now the lift to low carbon orbit is becoming a bit of a routine mission now so not all that much to talk about i do have a few shots to show you though we have little beauty shots like this uh just you know uh we've gone from darkness to sunrise and then after a little bit of time we're going to go back into sunset uh we have the boosting stage the transfer burn as it should actually be called boosting stage uh up to the moon and due to packed conics we get to see what we're doing and put it into almost the exact spot we want to and indeed here we are in orbit around the moon there's our target on the very southern limb and well what more do i have really to say about that um i've got a few trim maneuvers to do uh, i need to push my peri apps down closer to the south pole because you can see we're going to miss it there but you know with all the things i've learned over the past oh, i don't know three or four missions to the moon this is becoming um again quite routine 
and we make a periaps alarm to get us down there. I'm not sure why I made that periaps alarm because obviously we're going to be making staging maneuvers and just trajectory trims trying to get ourselves closer to the actual intended target. I would also like to take a moment to uh, point out the name of this particular vessel, the Exxon Valdives. Um, those of you who are as old as I am will remember that this was a an oil tanker that had a quite a nasty accident and, and absolutely messed up the world. And I thought what a fitting tribute to call, name this fuel tanker after such a pivotal moment in the world's history, at least in the world's history that I remember about. Uh, right, so I'm starting to break away all my all my orbital velocity because obviously we need to bring ourselves down to a zero relative motion compared to the uh, the surface of the planet. Um, I am on targeting view right now, but thankfully because the Alone Ranger is parked on the surface of the planet, the two are synonymous with each other, which is quite good. But what isn't quite good is the fact that I found myself on this edge of the crater. So I'm trying to position myself around and for some reason, I end up making this hash of a landing. Uh, like It was quite a few rolls, quite a few bumps. Uh, unfortunately, all the fuel got wiped out, which, um, yeah. So a quick launch stage and transfer burn put us back inside the moon's sphere of influence and back with this beautiful trajectory coming down right on top of the bang zoom. Uh, I quite like overshooting uh, my target a little bit, mainly so that when I'm making my, my, my braking burns, I'm not making my braking burns further back from my target. I'm making them so that the, the trajectory ends up on the target. That's my theory anyway. Um, I, I hope that is the correct theory. Um, maybe what I'm supposed to be doing is, is not working like that. But hey, I, I can think of other ways of doing it, but this is the way I've been doing it and it's quite useful. So we'll give it a small shimmy left and right just to find out which way I need to be pointing to make sure I line up perfectly. As it turns out, I was trying to point it northwards. Of course it was, my trajectory is too far south. Obviously I've got a point north. And what we're trying to do now is just bring myself to a dead halt directly over the top of it. Now, unfortunately I've forgotten, that I, well I've not forgotten, I've not taken into account the fact that I've got these three tiny, tiny engines on the bottom of this this uh, refueling mission here. So it takes me a long time to break, uh, so long in fact that I want to turn my, my ship round and start coming down towards the, the center of that plateau there. Um, obviously the plateaus are what I've been aiming for almost the entire time, though for some reason I can't hit the plateaus, I can only hit craters. And that's a little bit weird as there is more plateau space than there are, is crater space, but I suppose that's just Murphy's Law right there. Long plummet is long, so even with this like times four speed, I'm going to cut out quite a junk chunk of it. So we come down to less than five kilometers, less than that away from the floor, and we come down for this beautiful touchdown at something like three meters per second. Uh, it should have been anyway, but because this is the Exxon Valdez, we have to kind of just throw it over on its side. Not intentional, but kind of a bit of karmic justice right there. Well, what now? We're going to switch over to uh, Rich Mal and go get our fuel tank. Like, what could go wrong here, right? Nothing, you bunch of pessimists. Uh, so what we're doing now is just transferring all the fuels over. Uh, as soon as I find out that there's not quite enough to actually completely fill the ship, I spend a long time trying to balance all the fuels out before I realize it would be a lot quicker just to dump it all back in there and then do the whole double draining system. If you're not aware of the double draining system, press Alt and right click on three different fuel tanks and then press out on one of them. Uh, the fuel that you're taking out of one of those tanks will end up getting split equally amongst the other two, which when you have a ship that is based on symmetry, such as this, the Alone Ranger, uh, makes it a lot easier to do stuff, um, well, a lot easier to balance fuel systems out, which is great. Uh, now, for some reason, I decide that I have to fly Bill through, uh, not Bill, what are we on about Bill? Rich Mal through both of my rear solar panels which has given us a little bit of a, a, an issue on power um, but thankfully there are enough on the Exxon Valdez to salvage uh, salvage off and, and and fix stuff but unfortunately these rear solar panels now seem to be completely uh, unremovable I was trying to use the attachment system to just take them off and dump them on the moon uh, but I can't do that so that that's a little bit of a shame so now we're going to balance some fuels out and obviously transfer those solar panels across so I think 
You don't need to see all this resource gathering. We'll, we'll just skip ahead a little bit here. Once all that was taken care of, Richmail's mission was actually a relatively straightforward and simple one. First thing we had to do was boost our way all the way to the other side of the moon or at least the other pole going up north and then it's just a simple case of cruising around to craters one two and three and of course taking those temperature scans all the way along and collecting all the money at the end it was literally as simple as that no no major explosions nothing really to talk about unfortunately and to finish up today's episode, we're going to go to the Autumn Leaf. <coughs> For those of you that are new, uh, the Autumn Leaf was actually launched somewhere about episode 2 or 3. Uh, I really needed some money quick, and they wanted me to test a tiny engine on an escape trajectory out of the Kerbin system. Great, I thought. I just fired it straight up. Uh, and it left on a retrograde orbit from the Kerbin system. Now, because of that, and since getting patched conics, I've decided that this is going to be going for an EVE encounter. Not the easiest thing to set up, but I'm going to be doing it anyway. Right, so with that, thank you very much for joining me for this half of the adventure. I will see you on Wednesday for more. Remember the Communicatron, and I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!